Recently, a number of people have asked me, how exactly do I create my figure pieces? Today, I'm going to show you how I do it. But first, a brief overview of the process. I start with 300-pound watercolor paper, and I gesso both sides of the paper. Then I take that dried paper, and I randomly apply a variety of colors going to the edge of the paper. The next step in the process is to take sheetrock mud, or joint compound, and with a spatula, apply a light coating to the dried paper, randomly exposing some of the color underneath. After the sheetrock mud has dried, I take a paper towel and lightly apply additional color over the dried sheetrock mud. Once that next layer has dried, I spray some water over the, uh, the paper, and I take a piece of graphite and lightly block out either two or three figures to give me a structure to get going. And this is a completed piece. Now, let me show you in detail how I do this. The first step in this process is to put a variety of colors of paint on the paper. I'm going to do that with this one inch chip brush uh, where I've cut the bristles off halfway down the brush. I like to do that because of the interesting marks that it makes on the paper. So we'll start with a little black and we'll just kind of randomly go over the paper. You see, this is sort of the effect of the stiff uh, chip brush that's been cut off. We'll do some black. We'll take another brush and we'll put on a little of this kind of rusty orange color. Kind of randomly, sometimes at the edge, sometimes in the middle. We'll move on to yellow, just a little bit of yellow I find is good, not too much. A little turquoise is always nice. And the colors you're seeing me use right now or what I'm kind of typically using these days is the underpainting. If we use a little extra water, it gives a nice effect. We pretty much cover the entire paper. I'm going to show you the next step of the process on an already prepared piece of paper. This is the application of the sheetrock mud. I use a three inch plastic putty knife to do this. This is our sheetrock mud. I favor the DAP brand because of the water content. There are a lot of different brands on the market of sheetrock mud, and you have to find the one that uh, works best for you. This is my brand. So we, do it, we take a little bit on the knife, and we just start at the edge, a light application, exposing some of the paint underneath. And I kind of go one way, then I take it in a different direction to give a little texture to this. And I leave some paint showing along the edge. That's sort of the trademark of these figure pieces, is paint peeping out the edges. And I kind of go back and forth. We don't want it too thick. We don't want it too thin. There's kind of a happy medium here that you kind of figure out what that is based upon experience. I started doing these pieces because my husband had sheetrock mud laying around the garage. He was a contractor then. And I asked him one day, what would happen if I played with this stuff? And he said, go ahead and try. And I did, and the figure series was born. 
Now we'll let this dry. Once the sheetrock mud has dried, I add a little more color to the top of the piece using a Scott rag paper towel. And I just do this lightly. I'm sort of, uh, at this point, thinking about the possible pl placement of the figures. And um, that is sort of what drives this next layer of color application. And I usually take the paper towel and fold it over so I don't use a million of them. Just add a little bit more color, kind of in a very light manner. Not a solid block of color, but it looks like it's been dragged across the surface. It sort of accentuates the texture of the mud. And I usually cut these rags in quarters and fold them over, which makes a nice applicator. We'll try a little bit of this raw sienna color. Just a little. Nothing major. Maybe a little bit more yellow. Again, I'm thinking ahead to where shoulders might be, arms, legs, that sort of thing. And then we let this dry before we proceed onward. After that second layer of paint is dried, I take a spray bottle of water and kind of lightly wet the surface of the paper where I think I'm going to be drawing the figures. Then I take a piece of graphite. I buy these graphite sticks and break them in half. Um, and I start to draw in a figure. I usually put the two heads first because then I can get an idea of placement. Putting the water on the paper wets the sheetrock mud a little and enables a more interesting drawing to emerge. We're just kind of abstracting these figures. They're not meant to be realistic. And interesting things can happen when you drag the edge of the graphite through the sheetrock mud. Of course, you get a lot of sheetrock mud on the graphite, but that can be wiped off. And then we have the, our figures placed on the paper. Now we're at the stage of actually painting this painting. And um, we're going to start probably in the background area. And I, I use a lot of these Scott rags to do this. So we're going to first add a little black to this, I think. And I just kind of do it like that. You can see you can rub and make an interesting pattern on that. We'll do like a little black here, maybe a little bit here, leave a little little of this orange. Then we will um, maybe mix up a little darkish gray. Try to keep your left shoulder back. No, no, no. The colors that we use at this stage are pretty neutral because there's a lot of color on this already. Some of it will get left behind, some of it will be covered up. And let's just start covering up some of this. This is just the first layer of this. We'll start with a dark kind of background. Probably will it end up being light. And I'm just kind of obliterating. I'm going to leave some things strategically. For example, I'm probably going to leave that bit of green. So we're not going to go all the way to the head right now. rub over this sheetrock mud and it's, you get an interesting texture. You can see some of these little lines popping out. Those may or may not remain ultimately. Same for, goes for over here. These are the kind of interesting things you have to think about while you're doing this. 
Um, let's look work on the heads a little bit. Maybe one will be kind of a lighter color, one will be a darker gray or a black. Um, let's see. I'm kind of favoring this one to be the light one and this one to be the dark one. We'll put the first layer of head paint on. And then we're going to mix up a little lighter color for the other head and see how we like it light. It, it might go dark too. Maybe leave a little bit of that green. Take one of these paper towels. Kind of accentuate that line a little bit. Um, sometimes I take a, just a sheetrock screw and kind of draw into around the head and reveal some of the underlying sheetrock mud. It makes sort of an interesting effect on the head. Depending upon how many layers are underneath, it's even more interesting. Let's darken up this head a little bit. I'm using a small brush for this process. But sometimes I like to blot it. It gives sort of an interesting effect because we do many layers on the head also. Use a wet paper towel to do it. You know, the background's a little bit dry, so we can keep going with that. Let's take a little bit of this Titian buff. Gray. Add a little white. And come up with a lighter gray than we were working with before. giving a second layer to the background and we're sort of leaving some color. Now it'd be nice to have a little bit of color in here, so we're going to maybe take a little bit of this, add a little white to it. And just sort of give a small bit of hint of color, spread it around with water. You can get interesting effects by spreading this kind of watery paint over the mud.
as I go, I'm eliminating more color, but still leaving some. Now we're gonna start thinking about the bodies, but first I wanna just go back to this light colored head. Maybe make it a little darker than it was. See how we like that. paper towel and wet that and blot it a little more. Sometimes when you do that, features will emerge. Not always, but sometimes. Let's add a little more Titian buff to that. Draw around it. Now we can start thinking about the bodies. A lot of times I like to leave a lighter area in between. So let's go with that. Now we have to decide what color these bodies and limbs are going to be. Of course, it'll be a multi-layered affair, so even what I think now may not be the final result. Let's start with some gray on this one. Not covering it all up, just providing a sort of a starting bottom layer. Maybe we'll go with a start the bottom layer for this leg to be this raw sienna type color. This leg will start out light, but it might go white, ultimately.
shoulder. And this is basically just a process of going around the painting, back and forth, adding color, taking color away. And I've come to use these, these heavy duty paper towels instead of brushes, I you get a little bit more of an interesting effect. And I'm not so sure I'm liking this head. So we're gonna redraw a little bit. Maybe it'll go dark and the other head can be light. That's better. This will have several more layers to it. adjust our background to adjust our changed head. A lot of water used in this process. Now I have to go back. Go back to our background for a while. We're going to have multiple layers of kind of a neutral gray. dry enough. Go back to our dark gray, and contrast here. I think we need to get rid of that red. It's just a little too much. We'll leave a tiny bit of it. Let's go back to the legs. And I think we'll put some raw sienna underneath this one too. Shoulder.
And I'm thinking maybe a black arm. Be a lighter colored arm here. Sort of blends into the background, but we're going to delineate it with a pencil. We'll do some dark gray on this leg. And I neglected to mention we are using acrylic paint. I don't think you could do this with oil. At least it would take three weeks to do it. And we'll just go over this head a little bit. There. I'm using a lot of water. We're going to have layers in between these legs, so a lot of water is important. Get rid of some of that color. more of this darker gray. I think we're going to put a little black over this leg. some of this color around the neck area, maybe, maybe not.
let's mix up some body color. We're going to leave this arm just the way it is. A little of the underneath color showing, and then the second layer. a little shadow along the shoulder. Let's go back to our leg here. Lighten up this leg a little bit. Give her a knee. So you can see that this is a process of going back and forth, adding color. It's a little darker.
I'm going to make the body a little whiter. We take this little screw again to bring up some of the color on that knee, but not too much. Kind of a subtle thing. Same on this leg. We're exposing the layers underneath. And I think we'll make her head a little lighter. We've left a little yellow there to peep out, a little yellow here, little hits of orange there. You can see it's a really gentle process. Then we're going to let that dry. I'm going to cover up probably 80, 70, 80 percent of it. But we'll let it dry a little bit first. We're going to continue on with this leg and add a little bit of the lighter. 
sienna color, see what happens. Maybe a little bit down here too, to make these figures relate to one another. Now I think we'll do a little bit of a, let's see, maybe this gray. Maybe we'll mix a little bit of this and a little bit of that. We've left a little bit of pink showing and we're going to a little darker gray over that. doing this really, really lightly. This is not heavy handed painting. It's all about being subtle. Now I'm thinking about maybe bringing the light color farther down that leg. So we can try that. We can always, can always take it out if we don't like it. Just a little bit farther down that leg. Oh, I went too far. But that's okay because we'll go over it. I think we need a little bit of black, more black in this figure. And I'm thinking we'll take it on the hip and then go over it with a gray. Sometimes the sheetrock marks get in the way of your painting, and this is one of those times, but it'll be okay. Well, I think we're going to lighten this up just a little bit. We're letting this dry just, well, it's pretty much dry just for a second, and then we're going to try something else. Thank you. 
In a minute we'll go over with a little bit of uh, black or the charcoal gray. I like that better. But I'm going to leave this little bit of green and orange for our little pops of color. There's a happy medium between not enough color and too much color, and this one to me strikes the perfect sweet spot. We're almost done. I want a little bit more charcoal in the, this right side body. Not much, just a little. You notice I often do this with the paper towel. You don't want too much paint on it. So I like this one. I'm going to sign this. The next step is for me to spray the pencil lines with final fixative. And after that dries, we'll varnish the painting. So I've sprayed the painting with final fixative on the graphite areas. It's dried and ready to be varnished. I use a combination of golden, matte, and gloss varnish that I just pour and mix together in one of these old ice cream containers. I use a two inch chip brush to apply the varnish, which I will do right now. Not a ton, just sort of a medium amount. What the varnish does is really bring up the color and the, the texture. The, you can, it, the texture becomes way more visible when the piece is varnished. The blacks become blacker, the whites become whiter. And the painting is now complete. I wanted to show you how the figures look framed. I use a Larson Jewel frame uh, and always a double mat with a charcoal mat on the bottom. I do these pieces in 30 by 22, which is what you see here. Also half sheets of watercolor paper, which is 22 by 15. And of course the quarter sheets that you saw me demonstrate on. The figure series provides me an opportunity to have a calm meditative painting experience, which is in stark contrast to my larger, more colorful wild abstract series. If you try the process I've shown you, 
I hope it works for you and that you have fun. 